Now I've got a really fun pattern for you today. Just check it out. Big monster of a warm water bass fly right here. And I get to knock one more off of my to-do list. Stick around. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So a fairly new tire recently, Jeff, asked me if I could just tie up some big warm water bass fly that was easy to tie for a beginner. So I start flipping through my books and you know, which one do I come up with? Federation of Fly Fishers, Pattern Encyclopedia, and I found one in here called the Rubber Rabbit. Now this thing was tied by Lance Zook. I couldn't tell if he created the fly or if he just tied it for the book, but Lance is a member of the Hawkeye Fly Fishers Association in Iowa, and it looks like he's been tying this fly for them at least since the 1990s. Now again, I couldn't find a lot of history on this, so Lance, if you happen to be watching this video, yeah, leave us a comment. Let us know how you came up with this fly. So it's truly a simple pattern, just two materials, a rabbit zonker strip, and then some rubber silly legs tied as a skirt. And one of the coolest things about a fly like this is it's unlimited in the number of possibilities. You can tie it in any color you want. I'm going with this crazy bright orange because I had some yellow and orange pumpkin rubber legs. I've had them for a couple years and never tied a single fly with them. And I thought today would be a perfect opportunity on something like this. So it's a really cool pattern, certainly fun to tie. Jeff, this one's for you. I think you guys are gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, the rubber rabbit. Now this is about as big a streamer as I ever tie. This is size six. Now I'm using a 2X long streamer hook. I could have gone with a, a 3X long, but I didn't have any with that pointed, that point end bend. So I'm gonna stick with the 2X long right there. And it doesn't look centered because I want y'all to see the big tail when we get to it. I am gonna put, uh, that's a, a silver comb bead, and I'm gonna put some weight on it um, if for nothing else to just help hold this bead in, maybe eight or 10 wraps, but these cone shaped beads are not solid. You know, they're, they're kind of hollow. So you might want a little bit of extra weight in there. Now let's get that pushed up in there, right there. And I am stepping up my thread this time. I'm going with a 140 denier. I'm using hot orange because like I said, I'm getting kind of crazy with this guy. I'm gonna use the hot orange zonker strip. So I'll put it down behind it, just take a few wraps up over it, and then let's take our thread back to the bend of the hook. All right, first thing we're gonna tie in, zonker strips. And this is where you have all kinds of options. I'm gonna use the hot orange. This is 1 8 inch and rabbit, and it's pretty long. And that's, uh, you know, by design. So if you think of it, if I just caught the the leather strip in back there, it would still be pretty long, but I'm going even longer than that. The one I saw tied was a monster long tail. So let's do that right there. And I'm gonna just leave this, all this, without cutting any of it off yet, because, you know, we're wrapping it up for our body. So let's get a couple of wraps right here to catch this strip in. And don't be afraid to put a lot. Even if you're not using the orange thread, say you got black thread, I wouldn't be at all afraid to put a, a whole lot of wraps right here because it's not gonna be seen. This, this front that we wrap around it is gonna hide any thread that you might, have, you might have showing. So I'll put a couple wraps in front of it. I'm gonna put a couple more behind it. And then I'm gonna even put some up under it and just till I get this really, really dogged in pretty tight. So there's a wrap up under it. Now I'm gonna put some here. And this is why I'm using this 140 denier thread so that I can really dog this down right here. Now when you're satisfied you got enough wraps holding in, go ahead and take your thread up right behind the weight. Maybe let's go a little bit onto the weight. Now we're just gonna wrap this like it was a big piece of dubbing. And see that? that leather strip, you kind of want to treat that, say, as a, just pretend like it's a floss, you know, and you're covering the body with it. So one wrap right in front of the other, and it's going to take about, oh, four, maybe five wraps to get up there to the bead. Okay, I think we're up there. Can't really see yet, because I've got so much 
fluff going on right here. So I'm going to put a couple of tight wraps. Let's go with three. These last two are pretty tight. And I'm going to reach in here and snip this off pretty much as close as I can get it. Take a thick scissors because we're basically cutting leather right here. Even an X-Acto knife might be better right there. So let's, before we pull it back too tight, let's really bind this in. And I'm going to take it back just a little bit. Because the next thing we're tying in is these silly legs. And this is one of the reasons I'm going with this, you know, crazy bright orange, because I have some of these orange and pumpkin yellow silly legs. And they come in little strips like this where they're still, you know, attached on the ends. But you'll just want to cut a couple inches off. And I'm going to go with 10. So I've got 10 pieces right here. And I'm going to catch it in right in the middle, almost like you were spinning deer hair. So let's catch this in right here in the middle with a loose wrap. Maybe let's do two wraps, not binding it at all. And now we can spin them around before we uh, really bind them in. Just kind of, we're making a collar with it right here. And so we're gonna have 20, you know, legs coming off on this skirt. So let's, eh, let's tease them back, kind of what we want, but I'm not going to bind them back just yet. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, yeah, just leave them right there. And this is not something I saw. I haven't seen any videos of anybody tying this guy. So I'm kind of just making this part up as I go here. But I'm gonna put some wax on my thread and cut a little bit of that rabbit zonker strip off. So now I've just got a little bit of uh, dubbing right here. And I'm gonna put a, put a noodle on maybe two or three inches. Not real tight, but just kind of this right here so that I can use this to help lay these legs back. Okay, so I've got a noodle on. It might be about two, two and a half inches, I guess. So I'm gonna pull all these rubber legs back and then I'm gonna use this dubbing noodle to take a few wraps up over it so I can get them laying back how I want. Okay, so now they're kind of laying back. Got a little bit of messy of a head right there. And what you might want to do, put a thinner noodle down just so we can really bind that, that dubbing. Because what I've got on there right now is fairly loose. So I'm going to just put a really thin noodle and then kind of go back over that little head I've got right behind the bead. So now I've got a pretty thin and a pretty tight noodle on. I'm just going to put some tight wraps right here behind that bead. Okay. So now our head looks okay. And I only got one, one crazy leg sticking up, but look at that. He cooperated. And now we're ready for the whip finish. We might have a little bit of cleanup afterwards. We'll see. So you know, four or five turn, you might want to put a drop of super glue on your thread or just do two whip finishes. So let's take a look at this. Do we have any cleanup? You know, I'm not going to worry about it. I think we're fine. And the, the book says this thing does tend to ride upside down. You know, I'm not so sure that it, it always will because it's not really weighted, but Either way, this thing is going to move like crazy in the water. So there you go. Pretty cool fly called the Rubber Rabbit. And it was certainly fun to tie. So I appreciate you watching, everybody. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.